If you love cinnamon rolls, you are gonna absolutely love this cinnamon roll bread pudding. It is so easy to make, it can be made ahead of time, so it's perfect for uh, brunch or any day of the week, really. And I'm gonna take a little shortcut this time, which is something I don't often do. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. But today, I'm gonna even make it a little bit more simple than I usually do, and that is because I'm gonna use the canned cinnamon rolls for this cinnamon roll bread pudding. Now, my preference is to make homemade cinnamon rolls, which I have a delicious recipe for and I will link to below the video. However, I think most people are going to probably just grab the can. So I wanted to show that process, how you would do it if you're gonna use the canned kind. If you are going to make your homemade cinnamon rolls, you would make them as normal. Just overcook them a little bit so they're a little bit harder. Almost think about like a stale bread. You want them to be a little bit harder, a little bit drier. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and use the can today. No need to preheat your oven or anything like that, but you certainly can. If you're using a traditional oven, you would use a temperature of 400 degrees, which is what the package says, I believe, yes. But because I'm gonna use convection, I'm gonna go on 375. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi oven on, set the function to bake, which it's already on, set the temp to 375, and go ahead and start it hit the start button, go ahead and let it just preheat for a few minutes while I'm getting this ready. That's totally optional though. You really don't need to do that. All right, now, my, other than preservatives, the other reason why I hate using canned things is because biscuits like this or cinnamon rolls, whatever you want to call them, because I'm scared of the pop. So here goes. That oh, wasn't too bad. Okay. So let's just dump those in there. Now, these come with, oh, this is a little bit different than the ones I had before. Some of them come with this little can of icing and some of them come with like a little tube kind of thing. So either way, I don't use it in this recipe, but you can skip my homemade icing at the end and just use this. That would be perfectly fine. But I make my own icing. Okay, now we're gonna arrange the cinnamon rolls in a pan. Well, it makes no difference how you put them in your pan. This is the pan I'm gonna actually use for the bread pudding, but you could bake these on a sheet pan if you wanted, you know, that's perfectly fine. I just like to keep it as simple as possible and use the same dish uh, for all things so that I only have one thing to clean at the end. So what I did was I put three of them on each end, two in the middle, it's perfectly fine. Let me think that, oh, nope. That one just has less goodies on top. Any brand is going to be fine of the cinnamon rolls. I just use eight of them. And then we're just gonna pop them in the oven. Now usually I think they take about 10 to 12 minutes, but we wanna go a little bit longer than that. Now I'll keep an eye on these, but I'm gonna set the time for 15 minutes. Now we don't want them burnt, of course, but we do want them overdone, a little bit harder than you would want to serve them if you were just going to serve the plain cinnamon rolls and that's so that they have the ability to absorb all the delicious custard to make the bread pudding okay so it's been 15 minutes at 375 degrees i read the label for the cinnamon rolls and they actually say between 13 and 17 minutes at 400 um, or 375 for a nonstick darker pan or probably convection. So let's see what they look like now after 15 minutes because we may need to go a little bit longer. Because remember, you want these to be more done than if you were going to eat them. So they are golden brown and they're getting just a little bit crunchy on top. What I'm really interested in seeing is the bottom. So let's roll these over. They are still on the soft side. So what I'm gonna do is flip these over and I'm gonna go another five minutes. Ordinarily, I would close my oven up so I didn't um, lose the heat, but I'm not gonna worry about that. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. The other thing you can do is break these up because you know we're gonna break them up anyway. So you could break them up and, um, and cook them that way. Because we do want them drier for the bread pudding than you would serve them. It's a perfect recipe if you make up a whole bunch of cinnamon rolls and you have some left over. Because you know, cinnamon rolls aren't that good reheated. This is a great recipe to use them up. I know some of you are saying, whoever has leftover cinnamon rolls? I know, right? But sometimes you have to make, you know, eight of them in a can and, you know, there might be only a few people 
eating them, so you might have some leftovers. So wait until you have eight of the leftover rolls and then you can make the cinnamon roll bread pudding with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and just hit start again. It's gonna default to 20 minutes on 375 on the bake function. I'm just gonna take this down to five minutes. That should be good. And I mentioned this before, but I'm gonna say it again because it's one of the important things about bread pudding is you want your bread, whatever you're using. So if you didn't wanna use cinnamon rolls, you could make the same recipe with um, you know, day old bread even, you know, a brioche or something like that. So you don't have to do the cinnamon rolls. It will still be delicious. So the thing with bread pudding is you want the bread to be dry so that it absorbs this delicious custard and that creates the best texture when you're done baking your bread pudding. So the drier the better for this, okay? But not burnt. All right, that looks good. So they're a little bit harder on the bottom, which is what we want. And now I'm gonna get these onto the cooling rack here to cool down some, so then we can break them up for our bread pudding. All right, there we go. Now, just scrape the bottom to get anything that's like kind of stuck on there, but you can leave it in. You do not have to wash out this pan. I like to get it off the bottom though and in to where I'm gonna start to whisk up the custard. Now we don't wanna put the eggs and the milk in right now because the pan is still pretty warm. So let me go over while this cools down, let me go over the size of the pan that I'm using and give you some directions if you were gonna use a different size pan. Okay, so this one is a 2.75 quart pan, and it is probably about six inches by seven and a half, eight inches. I'm kind of guesstimating here, I don't have my ruler, but it's 2.75 quarts. You could use a two and a half quart casserole dish, you could use a three quart casserole dish, and keep everything the same. If you're gonna go smaller than that, and it has higher sides because it was gonna need to to be able to hold everything. So let's say you have one that's half the size. You can still make the recipe. You don't even have to cut it in half. However, you have to make sure your sides are high enough that all the custard will fit in with the cinnamon rolls. And also because your depth will be so much greater, you are gonna have to cook it a lot longer at a low temperature to make sure that you cook it evenly all the way through. But it can be done. If you have a larger pan, that's perfectly fine. Your cook time will be a little bit less because your layers will not be as thick. Okay, so it's all about the depth of the cinnamon roll bread pudding. That determines the total bake time. Now you'll see when we get to baking it, which won't be until tomorrow because this does need to sit overnight in the refrigerator so that the rolls fully absorb the custard. But when we go to bake it, there is no exact time, okay? Because there's too many variables. It depends on how cold your um, mixture is coming out of the refrigerator. If you leave it out for an hour before you bake it, it's gonna bake a little bit quicker. If you leave it in the refrigerator until just a minute before you bake it, it's gonna be a little bit longer. So there are some variables, but usually it's gonna take about an hour. But we're not quite there yet, because like I said, we've gotta mix up the custard, get those rolls broken up into there, and then get this into the refrigerator uh, to sit overnight. All right, so my pan is uh, cool enough now for me to touch. It's still a little bit warm, but I'm gonna get in the half and half, which is going to cool it down even more. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna put in my quarter teaspoon of salt. The only reason why I'm doing that, and this is uh, fine grind sea salt, is because I wanna get these pieces out so it's just easier for me to whisk, but I'm gonna use them in the bread pudding because any pieces of cinnamon roll are delicious and should not be wasted, right? So a quarter teaspoon of fine grind sea salt or kosher salt, totally optional, but I do think it boosts all the flavors in the bread pudding. Three quarters of a cup of your half and half or whole milk, you could definitely use that, that would be okay. And then I'm gonna put in one tablespoon of vanilla extract, so put that in. We're gonna put in a half of a cup of brown sugar. You could use white sugar if you preferred, that would be no problem. And then I'm just gonna break this up and start to sort of blend it a little bit. What we're making here is the custard. 
So before I put the eggs in, I wanna make sure that this cools down the bottom enough so we don't accidentally scramble our eggs, which is not pleasant in a custard. Then I have three large eggs. What I like to do is break them into a dish before I put them in. So that way, if I crack it into a bowl first, if there's any shells, I can get them out. All right, so egg number one going in. Egg number two. Egg number three. Now, one thing um, I will say is you can do this in a blender and it's really quick and easy. You just want to blend everything but the heavy cream and then add in the heavy cream and just pulse once or twice. And it does make it a little bit quicker. All right, now I'm going to just scramble these eggs, make sure they are fully incorporated, and then we're gonna slowly add in our cinnamon. Now cinnamon and, and all spices when added to liquid tend to wanna clump up a little bit. So sometimes what I'll do is a little, is a little trick, let me show you that, I'll get it started, is add some of the cinnamon with a small amount. This is a tablespoon of cinnamon, so I just added about half, with a small amount of the heavy cream and mix it up to form sort of like a little paste. That will help when we go to incorporate the whole thing. The fat really helps. If you just pour the dry cinnamon into this mixture, it does really tend to uh, clump up, okay? And it just makes it hard to whisk, especially if you're doing it by hand. All right, so just keep whisking this until you can no longer see any strands of the egg white or egg yolk and everything is fully incorporated. All right, that looks pretty good. I still see like a tiny bit of uh, some of the egg whites, but I'll make sure it gets thoroughly mixed in throughout the rest of the process. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that cinnamon in and we're gonna add in the rest here. And we'll finish with the cream. Now, if you use a blender to do this or even a hand mixer, you don't have to worry so much about making this cinnamon paste out of the cream and cinnamon because it just blends together. But when you're doing it by hand, if you've ever tried to blend in cinnamon, you know it gets little clumps and doesn't blend very well. All right, there we go, perfect. Blend this in and add in the rest of the cream. All right, that looks great. Now we're gonna add back in our cinnamon rolls. And what you wanna do is just break them up into little pieces and throw them in. Okay, once all of the cinnamon rolls are broken up, press them down into the custard. And then we wanna put some saran wrap or any kind of plastic wrap that you have um, on top. If your pan has a cover, like this one has a red plastic lid, I could put that on if I was making anything other than bread pudding and just throw it in the refrigerator and it'd be fine. But you don't wanna do that with the bread pudding. You wanna use a plastic wrap. And I'm gonna show you exactly why, because we want all of these cinnamon rolls to be under the custard the entire time so that they can really absorb all that liquid. You want to take more than you need Okay, so have several inches on either side here. And then before you seal it to the edges, press it down. So lift this up, press it down. Lift this up, press it down. Sometimes I'll even use a plate to put on top to really hold it down. But I don't think I'm gonna need to today. So just make sure that the plastic wrap is in contact and press down and then secure it. All right, there we go. Now, put it in the refrigerator overnight, at least four hours, but really overnight, so eight hours is much better. So I'm gonna pop this in, and then after it has absorbed most of that custard, we will bake it up. 
Our bread pudding was in the refrigerator overnight and now we're ready to bake it up. So a couple of things when you're making bread pudding, whether it's the cinnamon roll variety or a different variety, is you want a gentle heat. And there's a couple of ways that we do that. Number one, we use a low oven temperature. On the Ninja Foodie XL, I'm gonna go at 325 degrees. This is a convection style oven. Even if your oven isn't a convection style oven, if you're making bread pudding for the first time, I would probably stick to 325 degrees Fahrenheit just to be on the safe side. Higher temperatures can end up cooking the eggs to a point where they like start to separate, curdle, and the texture is all wrong for a bread pudding. So definitely the lower the heat, the better the result. Now you can even go lower than that if you want. It's just gonna take a lot longer to cook. Then that leads me into the length of cooking. That depends on how cold your ingredients are. I took the pan out of the refrigerator about an hour ago, so it had a little bit of time to warm up. If yours is coming right out of the refrigerator, it's gonna take a little bit longer to bake. So I don't set exact times on this, okay? This is more something that you're gonna watch and kind of look at throughout the cooking process, all right? So let's get the Ninja Foodie set up. I'm gonna turn it on. We wanna be on the bake setting and we want our temperature 325 and I set the time for an hour and a half. So we're already programmed in where I need to be. I don't usually worry about preheating the oven. You can if you want, but I don't usually worry about it. It's a long bake time, so it's not gonna make that much of a difference. All right, so let's get our plastic wrap off. That's extremely important. You can't bake it with the plastic wrap on or it will melt into the bread pudding. So we'll take that off. I like to cover my bread pudding, especially when I'm using a convection style oven that has a fan. That's optional if you aren't using a convection oven. You can leave it uncovered, but if you notice that the top is getting more brown before the custard is fully set, you might wanna cover it, okay, so it doesn't get too done on the top. This is heavy duty foil. That's not necessary though. You can just use regular aluminum foil. If you don't like to use foil, you can absolutely use a silicone lid as well. That's perfectly fine. You'll also notice that I have my pan with the bread pudding inside of another pan. That is because I'm gonna cook this with a water bath. Now, the tray that you use to put your water in ideally would be a little bit higher sides, okay? So if you have like a roasting pan or something like that that comes up a little bit higher, that's even better. But this is all I had and it's gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna use this, this is a quarter tray. That's what they call it, a quarter size tray. So like a half pan, but this is a quarter size and it fits perfectly in the oven. But the small roaster pans will also fit in the oven. And of course, if you're using a full size oven, you can use any pan you want. If you have higher sides, go up about half to three quarters of the way up the bread pudding, but this is only gonna go about a quarter and it still works out just fine. All right, now, before you put the water into the pan though, I recommend getting the pan on the shelf. This is another reason why I don't worry about preheating because it's just easier to deal with everything if the oven's not hot. All right, so I'm gonna set this on here. Make sure it's pushed in enough so that it's level, and then I'm gonna add in the water. I have three cups of water, but the amount of water you use will depend on how much your pan can hold, okay? So you may need a lot more than that. Just pour it in. All right, that looks good. And then just gently push it in. And now we will start the oven and get our bread pudding baking. So I will let the bread pudding bake uninterrupted for 45 minutes. Then I'm gonna check on it and see how we're progressing to see how much longer I might need to go. About 15 to 20 minutes before it's done, I'm gonna put a special like topping on top that makes it extra delicious. It's been 45 minutes, so let's take a peek and see how our cinnamon roll bread pudding is progressing. Now, <laughs> there's no way around this. This can be a little bit challenging, okay? We still have water that's warm now. It's not boiling, so it's not gonna like scald you. Um, and of course, we have a hot rack and a hot pan and 
you know, so there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I just leave it right in the oven. Even though I'm losing some of my heat there, I just leave it just like this and then just lift up and see how it's cooking, okay? Looks pretty good. We still have a little ways to go. I'm gonna take the temperature here. We are at about one, we're at about 120. Okay, so the temperature that you wanna aim for for your completed bread pudding is between 160 and 170. So we are not quite there yet, so we're gonna just keep on going. We're not even within 15 or 20 minutes of being done, so I'm not ready to mix up that special topping quite yet. So we're gonna go back in, I'm gonna go another 20 minutes, and then we'll check it again. Time to check the cinnamon roll bread pudding again. This time I'm gonna bring it all the way out. I'm hoping that it's ready for this special uh, topping that I like to put on. The topping's totally optional, but oh my gosh, it's delicious. So I'm gonna be very careful here. The water level has gone down some, so it's not quite as full, so it's a little bit easier to get in and out. But you wanna make sure that you don't get your fingers into the water because it is warm. And I'm gonna just let this keep going, okay? All right, let's check check the temperature and see how it's looking. Well, it's looking really, really good, but it hasn't started to puff up yet, okay? And we will see it rise up. So if you say, oh, it's so you know, short here, it's gonna get bigger as it rises up. So that tells me right away it's not done yet. We're at about 144 though, so we're getting closer. There is still some like uh, custard right in the middle. The outer edges are a lot firmer, okay? And that's normal because of the way food cooks, you know, from the outside in. So we're getting close. So I think we are ready to make up our cinnamon sugar butter topping. What I have here is one quarter cup of salted butter one quarter cup of packed brown sugar, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And then I just sort of put it over in splotches. I don't cover the whole thing because I like to see part of the bread coming through and then part of the darker uh, topping. And I'm not particular, as you can see. I'm not particular at all how I do it. And if it goes together, it's fine too. <laughs> all right, there we go. Now I'm gonna leave it uncovered for the remaining time that it takes to bake. So we don't need to put the foil back on. And we will finish it up. Now it could take another 15, 20, 25, even 30 minutes to finish up. You cannot rush perfection though, right? Okay, let's carefully put this back on our rack. So a rule of thumb when making bread pudding, especially if you're gonna serve it for a special occasion, is definitely make it up at least two to three hours ahead of time. Bread pudding is really delicious when it's served warm, or room temperature. So you can make it up ahead of time so that you know it's fully cooked, then let it sit out for 30 to 60 minutes before you're ready to serve it. Because we're gonna top this with some icing and we do need it to cool off. So the total time that it's gonna take to make bread pudding, uh, of course, you know, you mix it up the day before, that doesn't take any time at all, refrigerate it overnight, and then it can take two, two and a half hours to completely bake and ice in the bread pudding, okay? It's starting to puff up. That's what we want to see. Oh my gosh, amazing. I don't think it's quite done though. Not quite. But we're going to give it a little temperature and check it out. So let's see. 166. So nope, we're going to go another five or 10 minutes, okay? Let's see, how did I take this out? I want to get the, I think it was this way, so I'm going to turn it this way. 
just in case there's any uneven baking going on because I see this one area that's nice and puffy. So we'll let this go another five or 10 minutes and when it is completely done and has reached about 170 in temperature, I'll take it out, put it on the cooling rack and then we'll make up this delicious icing. So it took a total of 90 minutes for the bread pudding to be completely done and have that temperature in the 170 range. Mine actually got up to about 175. And I took it out, let it cool for a few minutes. I'm gonna let it cool even longer, but while it's cooling, I'm gonna make up the icing. Now, if you have the icing that came with your cinnamon rolls, you can absolutely use that if you like that. I just happen to like to make my own and I make a little extra because I serve it alongside the bread pudding so that people can spoon a little bit extra on if they want. Okay, so we have four ounces of cream cheese here. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, quarter cup of heavy cream, and we're gonna slowly and carefully sort of beat this up on low speed. Okay, that looks great. Now, an easier way to do that is to put a little bit of the powdered sugar in first, and then your cream won't splash all over the place. But I add it after the fact because I wanna see how thick I want to get it. The consistency is completely up to you. So you can add in some powdered sugar and then if you wanted it to be thinner, you could add in a little bit more cream, which I probably will do after I put the icing on the top. So for people, when we're serving it, people wanna spoon some over, I'll make it a little bit thinner so it's a little bit easier for them to do that. But when I put it on top, I want it to be thick enough that it just pipes on in a pretty design. So I usually use about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of sugar. Really, you can go by your taste too, however sweet you want it, or if you don't want it sweet, you can even leave it out. There's plenty of sugar in there already, as you know. Okay, great. And then I'll just grab a little scoop here and Mm, that's perfect. Oh my goodness. The only thing I would probably add just to kind of boost all those flavors is just a pinch of salt. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just a pinch of fine grind sea salt. Now that might seem odd to be putting into a dessert, but salt brings out the flavors, the other flavors in your dishes. So even in sweet things, adding just a pinch of salt will make a world of difference. absolute perfection and it's not too sweet it's got a really nice flavor and the cream cheese pairs so nicely with the brown sugar and the cinnamon flavors oh my gosh it's going to be amazing all right i'm going to let this cool down because it's still warm to touch and i want it to cool down enough that when i put the icing on top it's not just going to simply melt okay we want it to be in a design which is nothing fancy by the way but you could, you could pipe it really pretty, but I don't, I just drizzle it over top. So I'm gonna let it cool for another 15, 20 minutes and then we'll get it icened up and I will scoop some out and give it a taste for you. All right, so this is cooled down enough that I can touch the pan, so I feel comfortable moving on to doing the icing step. So what I use is just a plastic bag, open it up, make a little cuff, that will help keep your hands clean. And it just makes it easier, I think. Keeps the outside of the bag clean. Then scoop a little bit in. We're not gonna need a lot of this because remember, I'm gonna thin this out a little bit and make it into a sauce. So just one little scoop is fine. The most important thing when you're using a baggie like this, or even they have like disposable decorating bags and I use those sometimes too. Uh, but the big thing is when you get it down in into the corner, make a really tiny, tiny cut with scissors, okay? Because if it's too big, it's just gonna come out too thick. All right, let me go ahead and pull this over here. And then the only thing I do for the top is just, you can see, nothing fancy. Just 
adds a little bit of interest to the top. Now with the rest of this, I'm gonna thin it out for that sauce. So I'm gonna put it in, back into this bowl, put in about a tablespoon at a time of cream, and then just mix it around until it's thin enough that when you scoop up some, it just kind of drizzles over. And this is totally optional too. I mean, you could slather the whole thing on top and, and be done. That would be perfectly fine. If you want to put it all on top, I would keep it thick though. So I added about three tablespoons of cream and that looks good. That's perfect. And just pour that right into little container here and you serve it alongside of the bread pudding so guests can grab a spoonful extra if they want. Okay, put that there. Now let's get this, let's get this scooped out here. This is very rich, so I usually go into thirds here and then try to get four uh, slices down this way, okay? So how you cut it is up to you, but here we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm investigating here is to see if we have any of that overcooked curdled egg. If I do, the only thing that means is I cooked it too long, okay? I let the temperature get up past that 170 into the 180 mark. So let's just see. I don't know though. No, look, it's perfect. Oh my gosh. It's very easy to overcook bread pudding. And then we'll just put a little bit more on there. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, this is the best bread pudding I've ever had in my entire life. Here we go. <laughs> wow. The flavors are phenomenal. The texture is absolutely amazing. That little extra cinnamon butter topping, you can really taste that. And then you kind of pair that sweetness with a little bit of the cream cheese uh, icing. Oh, if you like cinnamon rolls, you are going to love this. And it's worth every minute of time that it takes to make. Mm.